Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I'm super related to be scrutinizing another swing dance video today. But first, make sure you subscribe and mash that notification button so you never miss a swing dance reaction video ever again. Now, this is an event I've never heard of before. It's called JATS. Uh, I think it's an acronym for something. Jumping at the seaside, I think it is. Pretty clever when you think about it. Now, this looks like it's going to be a teacher's introduction, which are some of my favorite things to do because it allows me to get a peek at what teachers are about to teach or possibly what they've been working on. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about this footage. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right, so I am surprised as you are about who is going to be performing in this. So let's see what's going on. Oh! Hector and Sonia. Let's just go right in. Pay attention when you, these two have a lot to say. Yes. Yes, Hector, you see what I mean? It's very, some little things that they add. A lot of uh, tango influence in their dancing. Ah, yes, Vasya and Alexi. Yes. I love these two. Um, I haven't seen her dance as much as Alexi, but I really like how he does a lot of timing in his dancing. Really sensitive to the music. Anan Yanata! Yes! Nice little hug, I love it. Yes, beautiful. Oh, so good. Oh yes. Yes, yes. There's some beautiful movement there. That was really surprising. Let's see who's solo jazz. Oh, Claudia! You know, she's extremely special, guys. There are people who do solo jazz, and there are people who love solo jazz. They feel it. She has a relaxed joy. That's what I love about her dancing. It's syncopated, it's mature, it's relaxed, it's cool. It's, it's all those things that make me want to say, if I'm showing a brand new dancer solo jazz, I'll find a video with her. And maybe a few others. She's just, she's just that good and extremely grounded. What's about to go down? Sonia! Alright, so she's another one. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-oh, we got like a cool little jam. This is great! <laughs> Come on, Hector! Jonathan! Yes! Yes. 
Shim Sham never fails. Who's this band? Oh, that was smooth, Hector. Oh, that was really cool. Sonya had to help up Alexi. He almost busted his pants open with that split. He might have. I don't know. Let's talk about this one. I love these kind of moments when uh, the dancers get out. They have a good time, clearly, but yet they're still kind of on edge. They got to kind of show off to the camera a little bit, kind of let the students know why they, they are teaching. And I like that because I get a glimpse of who they are um, right now, what they're doing right now, I gotta be honest with you guys. I was really surprised about this lineup, and more importantly, I was surprised at what I saw by some of these dancers. I'm gonna tell you right now what the couple of moments that I really liked. There was a moment with Hector and Sonia where Sonia did a stop, and it looked like Hector had another idea with it, and he was like, okay, I'll stop too. But then as he was doing the stop, the piano player was kind of mimicking with that. Oh, those are just, the movement itself doesn't look that great without the music. You, you kind of have to have that accompaniment together in order to like appreciate the overall aesthetic of what they were doing. And I love that. That's the, for me, the essence of what call response really is. Musicians and dancers working together. That was a really unique move or series of movements. Um, another moment that I really liked and it was, I think it was with Jonathan and Anna. Um, yeah, they were doing some styling with this when they were just doing some basic swing outs. He was moving his body in really random ways and just obtrusive shapes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love that kind of stuff because it makes me wonder what's going to happen if he's doing weird shapes that are intentional in a basic shape like a swing out variation and he's adding like different styling things it makes me want to watch more because i don't really know what to expect and i liked what i saw he was my favorite moment uh tonight watching this i liked their set i think it was that uh it was a moment yeah they were just kind of taking it easy it was syncopated and he was doing some stuff with her and she was clearly doing some like slides and stuff and adding a lot of syncopations, <clears throat> but I liked the overall posture with his body. It almost looked like he was a break dancer, like a b-boy. He was like hitting certain <laughs> positions and moving. I, I love when I see people kind of do something different along those lines. Not when it's just, just wild and you can tell they're just trying to be unique, but they haven't really thought it out. Um, he clearly knew where when to actually put those things in there, and I, I appreciate that. I really do. And... Um, let me see another moment. I really liked also <clears throat> when uh, Claudia came out because her social dancing, when it's solo for me, is just so grounded. It, it's some people just have there's you can tell there are people who do swing dancing, and then you can tell people who do swing dancing who can't even put the feeling into words. They love it that much. It's just a, a part of who they are and their their personality. And when I watch her dance specifically, I can tell that there is just this deep, this deep connection with this music. And, and her, it's all in her countenance. It's all in her disposition with her body. And she's just never ahead of the music. She's never behind the music where it looks like she's just trying to do these moves and a series of choreographed sets that she has in her mind. I never get that from her. I never get that. There's just this natural 
personality that flows out and it just makes me excited when i watch it i go oh i gotta work on my solo jazz when i see her dance that's really cool what did you guys think about this i've never heard of this particular event before never been there before i'm not sure if it's in europe or not uh probably is uh the way flight tickets are these days it's super expensive to go across the atlantic um you know i'll tell you what too alexi's partner i really like uh, her personality. I haven't seen her dance much, but I liked them two matched up. I don't. I don't really see them often matched up, and maybe I, maybe I'm missing something. But I, I haven't seen them very often like working together. And I liked the tone of their match, the way they worked together. He was kind of a little bit more flamboyant, and she's more like cute as she's moving. And I liked how that worked together. And it was just all around a good set of teachers. Um, doing some really cool stuff tonight. I'll tell you, if I was present at this event, I would probably want to take a class based on what I saw uh, from Jonathan and Anna, based on uh, how they were moving tonight. Because I'm, I'm working on a lot of different things as a professional. We always go through phases of what we're working on. And it isn't necessarily objective things like, oh, the, the, I got to work on my swing out. Well, any swing out works if you can do it. How you look doing it is subjective, right? So we're in the subjective realm as leaders who, who know how to do the dance. So we're always working on things that um, allow us to express some deep emotion that we, we really feel and we want to just show it a different way. And I think that's the beauty of this art. It really is like a, like a living piano. You can just, there's, there's limits, but there's just an infinite amount of emotion and songs that you can write by dancing different ways. And it's wonderful to see dancers do what they did tonight because it, it's inspiring for me. It's really, really inspiring. And I would want to take a class from uh, Jonathan and Anna based on their movements, what they were doing. Looked a little fresh. It looked, it looked like it was intentional to be different. And I appreciate that. I really do. I don't like lazy. I really don't like lazy and cool and privileged teachers' presentations where it's like, we don't have to do anything. Everyone knows if we are. We're just going to keep doing whatever we want to do. And you better cheer. Right? I, I, I don't think people really enjoy it either. They're just too afraid to say anything about that. You know? It's just, it's just the way the culture is today. Not just in swing, but just in the world. People can't even say how they really feel about anything without being ostracized and, and you know, ridiculed. You can't have an opinion. Which is weird. It's weird. But... You guys know me. I have to say my opinion. But more importantly, I like to say what's true. So most of the times in these types of videos, you'll obviously tell I'm going to separate what's true from my opinion all the time so we don't get it twisted. But in this case, all of this is subjective and I really enjoyed it. I really did. And I, I'd encourage you guys, if you haven't taken a class, some of my favorite dancers in the world are, were performing tonight. Uh, Hector and Sonia, man, I'm telling you guys, I've worked with both of them. They're like, they're not just like, oh, we're dance family and Lindy Hop. These are like dance siblings <laughs> for me. We all kind of understand each other musically and work together. And there's just a different, there's a different level of love and appreciation for what they're doing because it isn't just cerebral and it isn't just a routine for them to go teach and work. It isn't just a job. These are people who really enjoy this and who really put their heart and their time into it. So when I see them dance, it's, it's coming from a different perspective. And I encourage you guys, if you've never taken a class from those two, you should do it. Stop what you're doing and go take a class from them. You're not just going to learn the technique, but you're going to be inspired to be different. They're those kind of dancers. I would also encourage you to take classes from the rest of the teachers. I haven't had any classes from any of the rest of the teachers. I don't know what they teach. I don't know. But from what I saw tonight, I will tell you, go take some classes from them. Go take some classes from them because I totally would in a hot beat. Um, what else, guys? Did you like uh, the little setup at the end where they're all just kind of freestyling? I liked the premise. I thought it was just a little weird. I, it was a little sloppy. Couldn't really tell who's what's going on. Who's leading this thing? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> I kind of felt that feeling. Uh, I always felt like something was about to happen, but it didn't happen. But it's all good because, you know, they already showed what they were going to do, which is cool. But I would have loved to see something 
like really serious with all of them kind of working together. And you know, it's weird to say that because I'm just being an ideologue on that because honestly, you you just don't have time at a lot of these events. Really, you don't. You're working all the time teaching and then when you get together with your peers it's more like hey we're good to see you for lunch hey save me a dance on sunday night right before it's over it's one of those kind of things but would be nice man to have just an event where the best of the best dancers best meaning the most passionate and those who are fully committed to the art form in a respectable way could all just get together in a big event and dance and it just simply be recorded for swing history. I want to do something like that. I might I might do it in America. I might do that and kind of make that a documentary just to have just modern dancers adding something special to the genre. Not everybody would like that. You know, not, not a lot of dancers like to put themselves in, out there in the process. A lot of artists don't like that at all, particularly if they do a lot of choreographed pieces. Um, that's okay, you know, because there's really a dichotomy of Lindy Hop, you have the performance side and then you have the social dance side. And I'm not talking about the former, I'm talking about the latter. Those people who really like the aspect of call and response, the vulnerability that goes with that, and filming that and putting that on camera. That's literally what we had at the Savoy Ballroom footage from the 1950s that really helped shape how we dance today. A lot of those movements from those videos, get that. So. How much more important would something like that today be while a lot of these dancers have their health for generations to come? So if you guys aren't in Lindy Hop, you need to get off your tail and get into the game. It's not as hard as it looks. Most people will say different things. Different teachers have different approaches. But listen, I'm the kind of person, this is how I was when I first came in. I want to get straight to the point. I want to not have to deal with any politics. I don't want to deal with your opinion. I want to know what's fact and I want to know what's fiction and let me move without without having to have chains put on me. And so I spent a significant amount of time trying to figure that out because I was already a teacher at the time. Once I figured out Lindy Hop, I started teaching within a year, still trying to figure out how to teach. How weird is that? It just kind of tells you a lot about how the, the scene works where all you got to do is a performance. People see it and they're like, yeah, we want you to come teach us how to social dance. Oh. I don't know how to social dance, but I won first place in a performance. <laughs> that's literally what it's like. And I don't like that, but that's where I was. So it put me in a position to just, I could either hide and just kind of go in the circuit and pretend to be something I'm not, or dive all in, really buy into this idea that this is an amazing art form and I want to be respectable because I'm good at it, not just because of my position of leadership, right? And so... I would encourage you guys, get in the game. It's not as hard as it it seems to be. I've put together all these classes. I got about 30 free ones online, so you can check those out yourself just to kind of get a taste of our approach and our attitude towards the dance. We want to you know, respect what came, but we also want to add value to it in a creative way to help you take your fingerprint and add it to the Lindy Hop legacy so generations from now will be inspired. If you want that road map that I use to get there, I encourage you to check out my fundamentals membership. It will literally show you step by step the approach that I use as a professional to be able to keep everything working properly when I start adding new ideas so that the foundation never crumbles. So check that out. If you are wanting to be able to do stuff that you see on this video, that's where it all starts. Social dancing. So with that said, let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comments section. Let's hear it. Don't forget, anytime you post any profanity in this comment section, YouTube automatically deletes you. I got children in my house, and you guys are in my house. If you guys post external links, I'm not interested in other people's opinions. I want to hear your opinion. So be bold enough to have something to say, and uh, I look forward to hearing your comments in the comment section. If I don't see those, I'd love to see you in one of my classes online. Take care.